My name is Allison, and this is my husband, Gerald. Hello. And we are in full-time music ministry. Um, we lead worship, and we teach, and we do worship services and conferences and concerts and all that kind of stuff. And um, so we wanted to be able to share some things with you today about creating music programs for youth and children. And we know that you've just eaten and might make us a little low on our seats, so we thought let's get us up off our seat and do a little bit of singing today. So. Please feel free to stand up, because we always um, sing better when we stand. And you have your noisemaker, which I encourage you to use as you wish. And uh, you have no song lyrics, which is just fine. We're going to start with a song called Angels Watching Over Me. Anyone know it? Yes? No? Okay. You might know when you hear it. The chorus is really simple. All night, all day, angels watching over me, my Lord. All night, all day, angels watching over me. That's it. And then the verse is Gerald and I are going to sing some stuff. And we're going to echo a little bit with angels watching over me. It's very simple. We'll do the chorus twice to start. Let's do that. All right. All right. So Gerald's going to kick us off. <clears throat> so we'll do the chorus once, and then y'all can join us. Again, we don't have the words with this right now, so I'm hoping that you're going to know parts of this or all of it. So I encourage you to sing the parts you see. I mean, cryptic. I'm getting a weird look from everybody. It's nice. Um, <laughs> sing. Like you, I don't even words. know what the song is. Sing the parts you know, the parts you don't know. See if you can sing them, and just make a lot of noise. So we're gonna have a bit of fun. <laughs> I'm grabbing a noise maker too. Okay. And the, the song is going to figure into some of the stuff that we, that we talk about a little bit later. Oh, 
Thank you very much, everybody. Awesome. Uh, Thank you for being willing participants whew. in our spontaneous sing along. I was like to be spontaneous for you. Workshops, out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> I find that really works for me. <laughs> oh, I'm not using the mic. There we go. Okay. Pardon? Yeah. There we go. All right. So thank you for singing with us. We really appreciate that. So we want to talk about having music programs in our church for children and for youth. Mm. And I know in some ways it seems like such an obvious idea. And yet in mm. our ministry, we go to um, churches of all denominations, of all sizes, and there are so many people saying, we wish we had some music for our young people, and it's not happening. Mm. So somehow there's a gap. And so we're going to, today my goal is to give you lots and lots of ideas of things that you can do to start programs or maybe new ideas for the programs that you already have. And I just want to do a quick hand poll. Do any of you have choirs, bands, anything in your church currently right now? Excellent. Is it uh, for, for children or youth? Children or youth? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, there's, there's some different ranges, so that's great. So, um... One of the things that always strikes me, uh, when Gerald and I are not doing uh, churches, I do music circles for young children. And it always amazes me that parents come up to me like this, my child is so into music. And I, in my head I'm going, they all are. Mm. <laughs> and it's true, children respond so naturally and so effortlessly to music. And the parents have forgotten them that when they were that age, they responded the same way. So automatically, we have this wonderful way to reach children that is natural for them, that's primal for them, and that reaches mm -hmm. right into their heart. And what a better way to help them learn about their faith than through music. When I was a child, I was a very shy little girl, uh, which is very ironic that I now make my living standing in front of people and doing stuff. Um, but it was very hard for me to communicate with people because I was so shy. But for me, music was my language. And I was very blessed to be in a church that had opportunities for me to be musical. In your church, you're going to have children who are like me, for whom music is their voice, and it's a way for them to connect with their faith. And for others, it's just going to be something fun and great they can do. But either way, there's great ways that we can reach in and help children. And the studies are endless on how music can just help with child development, especially with young children, with language. I'm always amazed at um, young children who know these big, vast stories and um, character names of, of mm -hmm. songs that they sing, of TV shows, right? And I know a TV show has a big franchise behind it, but they learn the ditty, and suddenly they know all the character names. Mm -hmm. Well, why can these things not be translated into Bible stories? Yeah. And, and one of the things that, that we all know as adults is, I mean, you know, there, there are some of us that can rattle off Bible passages, but but most of us we can give the sense of something. But if I ask you to to tell me a, a, a lyric of your favorite hymn, I'll bet you you could rattle that off in a second. Music goes really deeply into us, and and we 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 memorize it. It imprints on our soul in a way that sometimes the spoken word doesn't, or the written word doesn't, um, because because it requires that commitment of our heart just even to sing it. And, and so, I mean, that's why it's, you know, and as, as we know that, you know, there's, there's a lot of kind of, I mean, th there are some toxic music out there. And again, I like, I like pop music. I'm not, I'm not condemning all pop music, but, but there's some really toxic stuff out there. And, and so the idea that, that, that we, can, we can have something really good gestating in, the, in their imaginations is, is just, is such an important thing. Absolutely. I was reminded when I was preparing for today about um, a verse from Proverbs 22.6. I'm sure many of you know it. Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. So I think when children are young, especially we have such a great chance to go in and help us be part of their formation. And I don't just want to talk about young children today because I do believe that um, music changes as we grow older, and I'm sure we all know that. The song that we love dancing to in junior high is 
brings back great memories, but it's probably not the song we listen to today when we really need something great. Um, creating music <coughs> programs within your church benefits your congregation in so many ways. It can add new form of beauty to your musical worship. Yeah. It creates uh, cross-generational worship. It allows children to know that they have a space within the church and not just segregated off in other rooms, which is an issue that we've heard being talked about already today. Mm -hmm. It can enrich family relationships as well, if you have programs where your parents and children can make music together. It can develop creative thinking, problem solving, teamwork, and as Gerald already referenced, it goes past your critical brain and goes straight to the heart. And when we're talking about teaching children about a relationship with Jesus, and going straight to the heart is a great way to get to them. Mm -hmm. Another thing with that as well is, and, and some, some of the stuff that's been intimated, that's been talked about, is that sometimes, you know, children's ministries and churches can buffer up against, you know, you know, just, just there are sometimes aspects of church culture that doesn't seem, that don't seem welcoming. And I find that how you can soften those hearts off if they see children in the pure excellence of their own joy singing about the love of God, it t I, 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 that will soften their hearts and, that will, and, and watch the room at your church open up for, for, for the possibilities and the ministries that, that you want to do. So one thing I want to do is give you lots of practical things. And I had you mm -hmm. singing when you came in. So, I chose those songs very deliberately and how we did it. Because I wanted you to have some ideas from the actual singing of things that you could do with your children. So, what are some things that we did while we were singing that you might be able to incorporate with your children? Music makers. We had music makers. Mm. Music makers are great because not all kids want to sing or are confident mm. enough to sing. Mm. If you have children with um, language issues of any kind, whether it's English is not their first language or they don't know the song, it's a great way to get them involved. What else did we do? Stand. We stood. Children are very physical. If you watch them for long, you know they don't want to sit. Mm. <laughs> so getting children moving and dancing is always a great way to get them involved. What else? Absolutely. And I used lyrics that I hoped would be familiar to you at your, what I hoped would be your age range <laughs> and your experience. Obviously, if I was coming into a room of children, I might not use those same songs, but I did try to find stuff that I thought would be known by you already. Mm -hmm. What else happened in the, the songs? I've got two more things I'm thinking of. He was showing, sorry, where the structure was repetitive. Yeah. He had the refrain, the one line was repetitive and over again. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What did you think, Charlotte? You smiled and you welcomed us all. You made it look like it was fun to be part of it. Mm. Awesome. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Anybody else have any observations? Seeing the little girl moved around in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You matched up a song that might not be so lively with a song that was lively. Yeah. We did. We did do a mashup. And I, I love mashups. And if that's a new term for you, um, it's where you take two songs with a similar theme and you literally kind of mash them together. So when we took the Joy to the World Chorus and put that with Joyful, Joyful, We Adore, that we put the songs together, obviously there's a similar theme of joy. Mm -hmm. um, we love doing that because it's one of those songs where like if people uh, know hymns really well, it's kind of a new way to open up that hymn mm -hmm. when they might not be open to contemporary music. Exactly, um, like if, if, if some churches are obviously more traditionally based, and if you find a way to incorporate, as Alison, sorry, it, it, to incorporate hymns, just, just slightly tweaked, slightly, slightly different, so, so that, so that the children find it more attractive to sing. Mm -hmm. But, and th there's something really extraordinary. Um, just a, a, a little anecdote. We, we, we played a, a church um, in in Whitby, and we were brought in just to, to work with. They, they had a traditional music team, and really exceptional musicians, very classically based. So, so things like pocket and groove are things that they had trouble with. So that's what we were brought in. We were working with them a, a little bit with that, and. Um, the next morning, um, when when kind of um, the the old guard came in and saw us kind of setting up, I mean there was there was very it was very icy, very cold reception. Um, about about twenty minutes before the service starts, these this group of of I, gosh I wish I could have paid them, like this group of like twelve year olds came in and sat in the front row and they were so excited, 
and we did 10,000 reasons. And they sang along, and they sang with their whole hearts. And you saw the people a little further back. You saw them, this paradigm shift. It was really quite extraordinary. And, and uh, anyway, it just, it just it, it's re regardless of what you're buffering up against, I, I mean, I've, it, it obviously doesn't happen. Like, that's a little, you know, kind of Brady Bunch movie kind of, it act, but, but that, that's a true story. The other cool thing about a mashup is that um, I chose, we chose a pop song with the Joy of the World Chorus that I figured you'd know. Um, this is going to be a great way to maybe get teenagers to bring on their own songs. You know, give them the challenge of saying, what's a song you love to sing with a positive theme? Is there a hymn where we can kind of put them together? Can we bring that into worship in a new way? So a mashup is a really neat way to engage your kids' creativity. So I want to talk about a few of kind of the broad strokes of what we can do with children's music. And obviously the first one that everybody thinks about is a choir. A choir is a great way to get people involved because mm -hmm. you don't need to be a perfect musician to be in a choir. Mm -hmm. Obviously we've all heard those professional children's mm -hmm. choirs which are wonderful, but the wonderful thing about a choir is that you help to support each other. Mm -hmm. And there's great lessons on, I mean I grew up in choirs, I could talk today about the benefits of them in terms of like teamwork and uh, learning to lean on each other. And socializing. And yeah. socializing. Yeah. But I want you to think just a little outside maybe the standard idea of a choir. Because if you're a choir director, you've got those ideas. But what if you're not a choir director, but you still want your children singing? What if you think of something a little less formal, more of a singing ensemble? You could even get your kids to give it a name. What about things like movement or dance? Could they make a prop or some other thing that could help them? You can have a formal children's choir, and if you have those skills and resources, that's awesome. But if you don't have them, what are some other ways that you can think about getting your children singing in a group? I can tell you right now, my best friendships in my life, including my husband's, and my best friend, who was our maid of honor, I met those people singing. That's how I've made my best friends. And there are relationships that can grow within that, that can really help not just children in their individual lives, but in their spiritual walk. Mm -hmm. So I really encourage you to find a way to have your children singing together. I'm jumping ahead of myself. There we go. Um, oh, and if you're doing it, make sure your kids are learning some music skills as well. Mm. It's just great because it will help prepare them for music later on, but it's just a great way to be able to enrich what's happening as well. The other thing that I want to say is that all the programs that you might have for children, make sure worship is at the core of them. There's lots of children's programs that are, you know, they're trying to draw from the outside community and they just go, come, and we'll just sing all kinds of things. And it's great to draw people in. But remember that we're trying to teach children to get to know Jesus. So somehow have worship at the core of it. Start with prayer in all of your things. Mm -hmm. If you have, when we lead a band, when we go in to visit with a choir, we always start with prayer. And we generally lead, but it might be a good mm -hmm. thing in your group to be having children maybe taking turns leading prayers, but make sure that's part of it. Make sure that they know we're here to sing, we're here to have fun, we're going to learn some stuff, mm -hmm. but we're singing for God. And, and if you noticed in the worship service this morning that w I underscored when Allison was praying, and not that you need uh, somebody playing, but, but, but even just having, you could even just have some gentle music in the background as, 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 as you trade prayers back and forth. Yeah. Absolutely. So now we formed a choir in your church. So now we need a band. <laughs> now we need a band. That's right. Not all churches have bands in them, but we all know that kids love bands. Mm -hmm. They listen to them. They all have their rock star fantasies. They're learning instruments in school. Mm -hmm. So why not start a band with your young people? This is primarily going to be your teenagers, but you might get some young people as well. My cousin is uh, 11 years old and he's taking drum lessons, and he's very, very proud that he got to play the drums in church. Now, the drummer played the drum kit. He played one drum with one stick. <laughs> but he still got to be part of the band. Mm. So, I lo okay, I love bands in churches for so many reasons, and I think they're great for youth mm. because it gives them a chance to do something where they have to hold their own part. So, like, when we're in a band, Gerald obviously plays guitar and sings, and I sing, and someone else will play drums, and someone else will play piano. And it's a great lesson for kids as well about how learning your individual skill helps you be part of a whole. Mm. How you can create something bigger than yourself with your own small part. So, so, so many secular things that, that children are subjected to at that age are about com competition. 
Whereas, whereas what this is, this is creation, right? This is, this is, this is, this is, this is people working together to create something beautiful to celebrate God. And, and, and there's, so, so it, it, it gives them a different, it gives them a, a different view to look at the world through. So a couple of really practical things to think about if you felt that you wanted to start a band in your church. The first is, who plays what instrument already? So talk to your teenagers, find out who's studying what. Is somebody playing guitar or is somebody taking piano lessons? Also think about where would we want to use this? Because I know that not all churches are open to having this as part of their Sunday morning worship. Is it something that you do on a weeknight as a jam session for your kids? Mm. Do you actually hold maybe a youth worship night where a few of the teenagers can help lead the rest <coughs> of them in singing? Is it the kind of thing where um, you have six guitar players, so you actually want to start more of a guitar club and have them learning songs together? There's different ways you can think about it. So start first with what you have and what can we build on from what we already have. And there, start to think out. Well, if I have two piano players, maybe there's more who want to join. Maybe we have a music teacher in our church mm -hmm. who might want to help us train some of these students. I think there's also great ways here where you can kind of help support people in your congregation. For example, if you have some music teachers who are part of your congregation, mm -hmm. how can you help them maybe provide some advertising for their music studio while also helping the children in your church learn some new music skills? Um, if you have an adult band in your church, kind of like what I mentioned with my cousin, you can have young people shadowing in the band mm -hmm. where they might not be able to lead the whole church in worship, but maybe have them play along on a Sunday. Maybe have them come to rehearsal. I mean, that's, what, that's what I would do first. Because again, it, it, like there is, I believe there's a value in, in earning something and, and in, in, in placing something over there and saying, you know, and uh, having having that be kind of the the, the carrot, right? Is is the idea that you know you get up, you know, a month from now, like why don't you work on this one song, and learn learn this, learn this one song. One of the things that's always been really important for Allison and I is, and we've we've led bands where that have had like you know, uh, one guy had his doctorate in, in rhythm. He's made he's brilliant. We've we've also worked with people who are very 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 new musicians, and kids and and. The key is to put them in places where they will succeed, where they feel they feel like they're contributing as uh, to the to the highest degree that they can. So the idea of having one song that they learn, that they work on, mm -hmm. and that eventually they do in worship. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the other thing I I wanted to say too uh, in regards to bands is if you do start a band, you're going to need tech. As you notice, we use microphones, we use an amp, and when you start to get into bands, you start to need tech. You need speakers and you need, you know, balancing of like, you can't have singers sing against drums and think you're going to hear them. And this opens up a whole new ministry for your teens. There are teens who don't want to make music, and there are teens who might just be too shy, but they love tech. I mean, let's be honest, kids love tech. Look at their iPhone, their iPad, they love doing that stuff. So why not give them a chance to do that in worship? And, and don't, don't dismiss tech as just something that's behind the scenes that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. It is a worship act in and of itself. Absolutely. It's so necessary. And if you think of your music team and your tech team as a two-fold ministry, there's great, beautiful things that can happen there. Um, so I highly recommend that, that you think about that, think about what your actual needs would be, and then think of ways that your teenagers can be involved. If this is something that you don't have any skill level in, there's people who could come in and do a workshop. There might be um, students at a tech college who might be able to get some intern hours coming in and helping training, training your kids. But I would definitely think about that as another aspect of your music ministry. Mm -hmm. They're not separate. They're definitely tied together. Um, and I was also thinking about in terms of bands and, and giving children um, a chance to play instruments and to help lead worship in that way. Um, I would also, if I was leading a whole youth band, I would get them thinking on their iPhones every once in a while because they're playing with them anyways, so let's give them a chance to play with them in church. Uh, I don't know if anybody's familiar with a band called the Rend Collective. Have you heard of them? They're a group out of Ireland, and they kind of broke because they created this entire arrangement of Chris Tomlin's How Great Is Our God, 
using their iPhone apps. They did the entire thing, the keyboard, the drums, the bass, even recording the vocal with their iPhones. Now it sounds very gimmicky, but it was so well done and it was so beautiful. And I think a really neat challenge to put out to your youth would be to see um, how they could create a worship song using some of their technology. I just think it's really great to be able to get, um, we sometimes have this straightforward idea of what music for youth in church needs to look like. And I get fearful of it sometimes because it looks like something that adults want to see and not like something that kids want to do. And I think it's so important that we go beyond creating a picture-perfect Sunday morning moment and actually create programs where children feel engaged and valued, that their creativity and their ideas are welcomed even if they seem weird or quirky, and that somehow through all of this as adults, we're guiding them towards Christ. And again, like if you're going to do stuff that, that's, that's fr that fringe, it, it's stuff you might not want to bring into a worship. But that wouldn't be Sunday morning. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that no, give it to them as a creative yeah, act, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like oh, maybe totally, it becomes totally. part and of a youth group challenge. And or the fact that, that 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 a lot of a lot of kids would find this and a very intimidating thing, whereas whereas s strumming on a, on a on an iPhone screen isn't intimidating. And the fact that there are apps where you press one button and and you go like this and it plays a perfect guitar chord, right? be getting rid of me soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, in ter and if a band seems totally overwhelming, think about just having a, um, a single instrumental ensemble in your group. Like I think we talked about, uh, some people mentioned handbells. There's a big handbell program here at the church. Handbells mm. are beautiful and also expensive mm. if you don't already have them. But think about something that might be um, another kind of ensemble that they could have. If your church has access to steel drums, maybe you could start a steel drum band. I played them in junior high and I really love them. Um, maybe a ukulele group or a recorder. Think about different ways that you can just get people um, playing an instrument that might not seem like the traditional kind of church feeling, but just a way to get them involved. And then teach them their hymns and worship songs on those instruments. Um, your your, your uh, church might have a budget for this, and if not, think about what people are already playing. Uh, I really, I don't know how many of you were here for Anne and Catherine's talk earlier about how they started uh, a new children's ministry here at St. John's. Um, but they talked a lot about interviewing parents and children and finding out, were any of you here for that one? Okay, good. Oh, good. So you know that part. They talked about um, how they learned about the needs of the congregation and, and the expectations of the congregation. And I would say the same thing with music. It's one thing for us to say, this is what I want, but it's also really great to be able to sit down with your kids, and especially with your teenagers, and let their voice be part of this. Um, I think a really great idea in terms of that would be to have field trips. Because who doesn't love a field trip? Uh, and I think field trips would be a really great way to uh, expose your children to different ideas. It could be with your Sunday school group, if they're old enough and if you have enough chaperones. It could be with your youth group. Um, you could go to a different church, maybe a different denomination, and see how they do worship. What kind of instruments do they use? What kind of songs are they singing? Uh, is it all adults, or do they involve their children as well? When I was in junior high, my um, junior high Sunday school teacher spent the entire September through the beginning of Advent taking us to churches of different denominations. And it's a, an experience that has stuck with me my whole life. Because as I went to all these churches, I saw church being done differently, but faith was kind of the same. So I highly recommend that you start doing some field trips with your kids, showing them these kinds of things. I would even do things, like especially here in, a, in Toronto and surrounding area, so many artists come through this way. So is there you know, a well-known worship band that you could go see? Is there a local worship band that you could go see? Is there um, a children's music workshop or a children's concert that you could take your children to? And then after you do that, go out together and talk about what you saw, just like we talked here about the music that we sang. Talk about the music that you saw and the songs that you heard. What did they like and what resonated with them? Mm. What are things that you could do at your church? Well, you probably can't put on the whole Casting Crowns concert that you just saw, but maybe there was a song that everybody liked. Maybe one kid is now excited about playing guitar. So I would highly recommend some field trips. Mm. Um, I also saw a show last year. I was going to say, too, they could be 
Christian shows would be a great idea, but you could also, if you wanted to, go see non-Christian shows and just talk about the music that's involved there. And if you have a church culture that doesn't have um, high discussions of spirituality yet, maybe that's a good way to just start uh, bringing that into the conversation. I went to see a, a children's performer last year. His name is Chris McCool. He's a very, very talented children's performer. And um, he did this great thing where he brought up all these kids and he gave them different instruments to play and talked about the instrument and talked about the sound. And I thought, you know, we could do something like that in churches. And it would be a great way to, do, um, to teach Psalm 150, where we bring in all the different instruments and teach people that together we can make a joyful noise. So I would get that idea percolating about how could we do a field trip, what could we learn about uh, the music and about each other, and how could that also translate into our music program. Um, so before we go into the next section, does anybody have any questions? I, I'm just curious here. What, what, what age ranges are, are all of you working with right now? Or, or, or looking to, to work with? Just curious. School age, like one through eight. One through eight, okay. Zero to five. Zero to five, okay. Three year olds to 12 years. Okay, okay. Pre middle school to 16 years. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and that's, that, that's right, some yes. of the challenge, right? Is when when you when you're doing something like this is is that is because some people will be working with teenagers, some people will be working with toddlers, and and the idea of of finding ways incrementally to, to welcome them I I into worship through music is yeah. is, is a challenge. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's funny that um, I actually thought of uh, something that Charlotte said to me last year, um, where she I I, th I you correct me if I'm totally twisting your quote, but you said how you want to get a God language into into the children in the, in the yeah. church mm. ministry. And I thought that, to me, that's so, that's something, I, I love that phrase, and I thought it was great because it really surpasses all ages. Like, I, I actually work with children zero to five all the time. That's, that's when I do my music circle, that's what I do. And I'm very aware of the language that I'm teaching them. And my classes are not uh, uh, faith-based classes, they're just in neighborhood centers. But when you're thinking about that age group, what are the words that I'm teaching them in this time when they're soaking up so much language? Yeah. As teenagers, what are the words of faith that we're giving them? Are we giving them songs that um, allow them to explore their faith in a way that seems real to them and doesn't seem like churchified language that we expect them to understand? So I think that what you're talking about in the different age ranges is such an important concept. Um, and, and oftentimes churches, have a tendency, um, and, and again, I could be I could be j over generalizing here, and I apologize if I am, but they kind of lump in the teenagers and the toddlers in kind of their their sing singular sensibility towards them. I mean, they know when they're when the nuts and bolts get in front of them that 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 it's supposed to be different, but but it, it, sometimes they gloss over that when when they're talking about about planning things, and that's that that's that's a huge challenge. That's that's a huge challenge. I totally agree. Like, because, like I said, like I do my music circle for children ages zero to five, and I've had people say, "I have this group of seven-year-olds. They love you," and I'm like, "No, they wouldn't. <laughs> they would be bored by me." <laughs> so, yeah, no, I totally agree that, that we need to think of them separately. And yeah, and when we think about it again, like our musical taste changes so much, and kids actually get offended mm -hmm. when you bring them songs that they see as being too juvenile. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the whole idea of um, talking with them and doing field trips and getting them to talk about the kind of music that they like is so important. Um, like I remember talking to a youth leader once and I was trying to ask what kind of music that he brought into his youth group and I listed some of the Christian bands that I thought you know were really hot at the moment and he's like oh they don't listen to any Christian music. I, need, I can't get them to listen to Christian music. And so his challenge was I want them to have music as part of the program. Mm. I can't even get them to listen to Christian music yet. So where do we find that bridge? Mm -hmm. Like how do I get them? So he would have listening parties, right? So how many kids listen to music on the radio and they're bopping along in the chorus, they don't actually know what the song's about. Mm -hmm. So actually getting them to listen to it and look up the lyrics and talk about it. Because when you start talking to teenagers about the song, oh, you can have all kinds of discussions. Like, suddenly you're talking about temptation and idolatry and all kinds of great big old Christian concepts, but in a way that just really tied into the music they're listening to. Mm -hmm. 
So if you get them talking about the songs they're listening to, then you can start to bridge the gap and say, I know you love this band and I know you kind of love what they're saying. Here's this other band I listen to. Maybe we could listen to one of their songs and talk I about their lyrics. I wouldn't say necessarily that I listen to it. <laughs> Here's another band that I know of that sounds almost exactly like it, right? Like, and I mean, th I, that's the great thing about Christian music right now is that is that you've got you've got hardcore rap that is that is amazing that is Christian and it's amazing. You've got you've got you've got like you know I mean everything the kids are listening to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is is out there and it's and it's of the highest quality like the extraordinary musicians now and and what's 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 great is is there was a period in the 90s where where um, a lot of Christian musicians weren't really Christian they were just people who had kind of failed at the mainstream secular musical world and then and then they went into Christian music to kind of you know oh this will be easier they'll like me they like everything, and and that's not the case now. Those people don't don't float. They're, they're, this is this is an incredible age of Christian songwriting. There's amazing songs being written right now. Stuff that like w you know we've been in the room with when uh, Paul Belosh un unveiled his 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 song, uh, the same love, and which was just unbelievable. Sitting in the room and seeing him just play that on acoustic guitar, you know, it's just and I. This this music is reaching hundreds and hundreds of thousands of kids right now. It really is. We when we were in uh, when we were, we were in Nashville, we were we went. Uh, it, it it was obviously a more evangelical church, but they had something that they called the golf ball. No, and they called the onion. The onion, sorry, and it was like this big round building, and it was just for kids. And they and we played uh, what the, they had a Wednesday night kind of kind of service because I'll call it that. And I mean, we were so playing. It was a youth worship service. Youth worship yeah. service. Yeah. And and it was we played. Um, you know, I mean, we, there 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 was there was worship songs in it, but there was also secular songs in it that had a worshipful message, and that was the bridge. That was the bridge. That that's 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 because they 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 want to believe that that they're making choices for themselves as well. That 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 and 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 they want to empower their own lives. They want to. They want to. They want to create their own futures and, and and plot that stuff out, but they they want to believe that they and there are churches that make them feel like that's being taken away from them. We know better mm -hmm. than you. Listen to this. Do this. Read this. And and they want to feel like they're contributing to their own momentum. And 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 I never saw that more than than in 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 that place. Yeah. This. Sorry. Is it okay? I'm. This is her workshop. I'm just oh, tangentially oh, offering stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Um, you know, as a, teen, I have a, as a teenager who I know who is the child of some friends of mine who goes to an Anglican church and she has a blog. And she's been very explicit on that blog that if you're a grown up and you know me and you read this, don't ever tell me about it. Like, I don't want to talk to you in person about anything around this blog. Okay? So that was a caveat. So she wrote this long reflection recently about the song Blurred Lines. Because mm -hmm. she was, she really enjoyed the song, and a lot of her friends enjoyed the song. But then her sort of Christian theological and feminist theological kind of considerations made her reject a lot of the ideas of the song and implications of the song, right? So the whole blog post was about what does it mean that I have this on my uh, on my iPhone? Does this mm -hmm. mean that I'm not a feminist? Does this mean I'm not a Christian? Right? And, and it was really it. interesting. But to be able to engage someone like that in a conversation about musical choices, I think, is really interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Also, there's so much secular music that has, it can either be critiqued from a Christian frame, mm -hmm. or at least it brings up Christian themes. Um, yeah. A good Absolutely. example is Leonard Cohen, who's of course not Christian. If anything, he's Buddhist. Right. Yeah. Strongly influenced by both Christianity and by um, by uh, his Jewish uh, upbringing as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's got amazing sort of spiritual songs, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And and for teenagers who didn't grow up listening to Leonard Cohen, it can be a revelation when you like introduce them to some of that music, and they're like, "Wow, this is fantastic!" Absolutely. And they're like, "Yeah, this was written before you were born." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Mommy and daddy are cooler than you give us credit for. <laughs> yeah. Do you see uh, a role still within uh, the Sunday school uh, framework for? what we call the traditional songs, things like Jesus Loves Me and So Light Mine? 
Absolutely. I just realized we were totally talking all contemporary music, and I, I don't want you to think that, that we're just saying that's the only way. I mean, we're, we're very passionate about contemporary music because we play it and because we write it. <laughs> but we're actually, like, I'm a mm. big old hymn geek. Like, I love old songs, mm. and I, I think there's a great place for them. Um, mm -hmm. Like, one of the things you pointed out was that in the songs that we did, there was a repetitive quality to them, which made it easier to sing. Like, we didn't give you lyrics on purpose today because I wanted you to to see how you could sing songs with people mm -hmm. and not have lyrics. And I think, like, when you said This Little Light of Mine, that's a great song because it's really she's catchy. Right? No. Yeah. But she also said This Little Light of oh. Mine. Okay. This Little Light of Mine. Yeah. 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 You know, the old-fashioned songs, because we grew up knowing kind of the lyrics of our sisters in the school. Mm -hmm. But the kids that I'm teaching, I, who I'm trying to expose them to now, um, I don't play an instrument it's really hard to teach a song with just having them banging on a trampoline. Mm -hmm. I kind of got into a karaoke style, mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to use these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Karaoke. Yeah. Yeah. Some way of introducing these kids are, um, to the songs that we grew up with. No question. Absolutely. Well, well I mean, it, w w you were here f for the worship set this morning, right? Yes. So you, you heard us do Jesus Loves Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm aware, like, no, uh, the kids in my church would not be able to sing that because that would be new to them. They wouldn't have heard that. Isn't that oh. interesting? And that's why, right. you know, it's my responsibility to make sure that they get exposed to it. Well, Absolutely. And I, I think, I mean, one of one of our things um, in terms of, of worship leading at, at, at any church is that um, we believe very strongly in new music because we're songwriters, but there's something about singing songs that have been sung for generations. You know, the, it ties us to the roots of our faith, and I, I, I agree with you. I think that's something that we need to be uh, telling our children about. And s I mean, the beautiful thing about Jesus Loves Me is that we can sing it anywhere and people know it. And if kids can get to sing a song in church that they realize that everybody knows, there's something really deep about that. It reminds them that they're surrounded by the family of God that they're not new and alone in their faith. So I, I mean, I always feel you need to start where you are. If those are the songs that you know and those are the songs that you value, those are the songs you need to teach your kids. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, it's, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely. And, and it, it's interesting because oftentimes people, people lose the connection to those songs because they do them as if they're kind of by rote. Right, they become they become kind of they don't have the same spirit and energy and 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 connection that they had when they were originally done. That's one of the reasons why like the, that that version of, of Jesus loves me that is very different, and mm -hmm. and it, that was an arrangement that I came up with, and and like even like this little light of mine we've done that in concert, right? Where and it's it, we do it you know it's it's a little different. It's like you know it's like. This I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine Well, I'm gonna let it shine You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just, it, it all of a sudden, it has, it has breath, it has life, it has, it, it's, it has, and, and it's, and it's, the songs don't lose their meaning. Sometimes we lose the responsibility of, of, of digging into them and 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 really pushing and pulling them and, and making them alive again. Yeah. I think too when you're when you're dealing with younger children, which I'll call kind of up to twelve, let's mm -hmm. say, I think it's really important to expose children to a wide variety of songs. Mm -hmm. Old songs, new songs, classical songs, jazz songs, all kinds of different songs. And then I think when you start getting into teenage years I think it's still important to keep that, that breadth of music, but to also really get them engaged in the conversation mm -hmm. about the songs and about which songs are resonating with you, which are the songs that you want to work on, which are the songs yeah. that you want to bring into worship. Because as, as Gerald said, like we want them to feel that their opinions matter in the church, that they're not just coming mm -hmm. in and doing what the adults say. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's kind of a shift that can happen around that age group. When we, we were worshiping. Are we at all answering your question? Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did the same. Um, a few years ago, we used to go out Christmas caroling. And mm -hmm. by two group of kids, none of the kids really knew Christmas carols. And all of us say, oh, God, you know, Christmas carols, we hear them all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids don't. No, they and don't. And they're not taught this at school because they're not allowed to be taught in school. They're yeah. not allowed to be taught in school. 
and so we are at the reception of this small meeting mm. and we don't and we all don't know and that's just beautiful yeah. Yeah. and uh, so if we don't teach them how to see each other more they're not going to care if we mm. don't teach them what is going to slow down his mind or be depressing mm -hmm. they're out of their own world yeah and I, I think you also because we're talking kind of about specific music programs, but I totally agree that music needs to be part of your Sunday school or church school music pro program as well. Like when, when Anne and Catherine were talking about bringing the choir members in to teach a song. Um, and we've done that kind of thing too when we are at churches. Um, actually, I think we did at Taste Church. We left the service partway through, went up and sang with the kids and came back down. And I think having that, that kind of bridge between the main congregation and the children's congregation and you know getting them learning songs as part of their weekly study is, is so important. Because like you said, if they're not learning it in church, they're not learning it generally. Mm -hmm. And you had a question as well. I was going to just more of a comment, actually, to what you were saying. I worked in the Bahamas several years ago, mm -hmm. and there was quite a backlash. It was a small community, it was three mile by three mile island. Religion is very much a focus there, and it's mm -hmm. almost very enforced. But there was a backlash with the kids where rap was really becoming very mainstream there. Mm -hmm. The lyrics really made my skin crawl. Mm -hmm. And I was teaching a group of two-year-olds to seven-year-olds. They're older brothers and sisters, and we're coming back in and repeating these lyrics. They did not want to have traditional church songs. They thought that was not cool. So I reached into my vault and brought out my old Temptations album. Mm. And my old Motown album. Right. And mm -hmm. the results were incredible. Because, you know, uh, I got sunshine on a cloud. You can't see mm -hmm. it, I know I can't sing it, but. Um, <laughs> and yeah. ain't no mountain high enough. Yes. Mm -hmm. The result, the parents came in the next day and said, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Because in one day, mm -hmm. these kids, first of all, they picked up on the rhythm. But then as the weeks went by, they started breaking down the songs and looking at the words. Yes. I got sunshine on a cloud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cloudy. Good. I got the sunshine. Yeah. Ain't no mountain high enough. No matter what's going to come in my way, there's no mountain high enough mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I can't go over. Mm -hmm. So, and the Temptations do a little knowing song called "The Error of Our Ways." Mm -hmm. So we broke those all down, mm -hmm. and then gradually I was able to um, bring back traditional uh, Bible songs like "Jesus mm -hmm. Loves Me, Loves mm -hmm. Me" and this little light of mine because because we took the lyric approach. Yeah broke it all down, the kids started examining more. And these are young kids. They're, and people said, this isn't going to work. But it did because they were like, yeah, those rap lyrics, not so hot. Yeah, and you pick something that's very singable. I mean, one thing, we love doing secular songs in a more worshipful setting, even for adults, because it helps to tie in those themes. Um, there's actually a group, I think, in the Niagara Diocese, a youth group that just plays pop songs, pop, uh, popular songs. And then they bring them into worship. They never do worship songs, what we would call a worship song. But when they do a popular song in worship, it becomes a worship song. Um, we're almost out of time. I just realized that. I just want to give like two more really quick things. Um, one of them is songwriting. I would encourage you in one way or another to uh, get your children writing their own songs. You can start with the middle school kids. I did a workshop this year with kids who were 7 to 10, and they all wrote songs. And it was great because they started, and they're like, we don't know how to write songs. And I was like, that's yeah. why you're here. Yeah. So and we that can seem really intimidating. The idea of engaging something, and oftentimes it's, you're engaging them in, in, a, in a something that you haven't necessarily done before either. Uh, no, I'm going to talk about that now. OK. OK. <laughs> All right. So because we have like four minutes, so I just want to plow this out. So uh, if you have songwriting experience, great. You kind of know where I'm going. If you have no songwriting experience and you're going, this sounds lovely. I have no idea what to do next. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one thing I would recommend is that there are lots of songwriters who do teach workshops. And what if you had your kids do a workshop with a songwriting teacher? How could that get things started? If you have um, people in your church, especially children who are writing prayers, what if you start partnering them up with some of the musicians in your church and together they can start creating things? Um, it could just be as simple as a little process that you do just so they have the joy of writing a song. It could be something that you have, okay, 
We're going to have a little songwriter night in three months. Let's all write a little song and we can perform them and invite the parents. Um, when you start getting into more advanced writing, your teenagers um, could start writing songs for your choir and your band that actually get used in church. But there's something about, hang on a second, there's something, <laughs> we're married, can you tell? Yeah. Um, uh, there's something about writing a song that goes beyond just learning and singing a song because you're actually having to wrestle with your own theology and your own faith walk and your own doubts and your own thoughts about God and putting them into a written form. So. And for younger kids, again, where, where all of that kind of that kind of structural momentum to create that can be a little intimidating. You can take, if you have like a children's focus where, the, where the, uh, there's been like one simple idea, you know, you know, um, um, you know, the source of all love is God, right? You know, you could just take that one sentence, if that is the theme of the children's focus, you know, and just have them. The source of all love is God. Just, just have them gently singing it. Just, just, and and you know, it, it's, 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 and then have them, you know, what, what did, what did that, what did, what did the children's focus mean to you? And then they'll say something. They go, okay, well then that. Let's let's sing that. And then, and it's just one line, and you, and a simple melody, simple, simple, couple of chords, and 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 just just that 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 repeat it over again. Because again, that's that's the beginning of them creatively partaking in the worship and it's and it's it's really simple it's really that's that that's one really easy way just to, to be able to implement something like that so just as we get to the end I just want to just mm -hmm. wrap up with just a few little thoughts um, just to reiterate what we said everything that we do we want to be joyful and mm -hmm. fun and inclusive let the children feel that their voice is being heard but we also want it all to point to worship and to point to Jesus um, I encourage you to bathe your program in prayer Ask for a group of volunteers who might want to help you. Ask for a prayer circle, not just parents, but people in your church who will be willing to pray for your music ministry on a regular basis. Um, I would keep things really transparent with your congregation. Hey, we're starting a band. You guys won't see them because they meet on Wednesday nights and they play for each other, but these are what our kids are doing, and we encourage you to ask the teens about it and to support them in that. Um, I would, I mean, I would, uh, this is going to sound like a shameless plug because this is what we do, but I would encourage you to invite in guests to your church and to do a workshop or to do a concert or do something that gets the kids really excited and that can become a springboard for the rest of a program. Um, and uh, I just want to say too that if you have any other questions, uh, my email and phone number is on the flyer that we gave you so please feel free to keep in touch and um, thank you so much for spending this time with me. God bless. <laughs>